2020 was an absolutely wild ride, a mix of emotions from highs to the lows. But at the end of 2020, I heard the greatest news that I could have expected. I got accepted into medical school. Now let's run it back to see where it all started. No, no, guys, guys, too far back, too far back. Jump it forward. Guys, I thought we had this worked out. What's up, YouTube? Hope you're having a great day. Today, we're going to cover my unusual path to medical school. For those of you that are new here, my name is Jason Crassian, incoming first year medical student. And I want to cover how did I go from undergrad to medical school. So please be sure to like and subscribe so you can follow me in this journey. I took two gap years before I start medical school, and now it's becoming more and more common. I'm not saying that this is the correct path. I'm just saying this is the path that I took and I am grateful for all that I learned along the way. So let's get started. So let's get started. But before we do, we got to get into story time mode. Ah, that's better. All right, let's get into this. So we're going to start with what I did in undergrad. So in the fall of 2018, I graduated from California Lutheran University with a bachelor's of science degree in biology. During my time in undergrad, I played division three soccer and club level soccer. I was a teacher's assistant for biology, biochemistry, and organic chemistry. I held leadership positions from multiple different clubs. And what I think was most important was that I volunteered at a local free clinic. So guys, let me know, do you wanna see how I wrote all these activities into my activity section? Leave a comment down below. During my gap year, I knew that I had to put all of my emphasis on studying for the MCAT. So in order to help save up for what would be the very expensive cost of applying to medical school, I started to work as a part-time tutor. So during this time as a tutor, I was really only working a few hours a week and the majority of the time was spent on MCAT studying. So in this time, I got to enjoy making some extra money, which was great, hone in my true teaching abilities and make them stronger for the future. It was during this time that I had an amazing opportunity come before me that I really couldn't say no. And we jumped to the next path where I got accepted to a position at one of the largest biopharmaceutical companies world, Amgen. In there, I was working in the process development lab. I was covering liquid chromatography assays to help in developing specific proteins. Now, this was my first full-time job after graduating from college. It took a lot of adjustment and it took a lot of realization that I was the young one in the group. It was during this time that I didn't get the MCAT score that I was hoping for. So I had to scrap my whole initial plan and start from scratch. I made sure to give myself some time off in order to ensure that I was fully refreshed. So my first time taking the MCAT, I studied using one of the third-party companies. And I'm not going to name names, but if you know that the MCAT is hard and the MCAT is important, you know exactly who I'm talking about. I realized that their method wasn't for me and it's not for everyone. So for my second time, I created my own study schedule using all the resources online. And let me tell you, there are so many resources for you to be successful. Let me know if you guys want to see a video of how I created my own MCAT study schedule from all the resources online and leave a comment down below. So after spending almost a year working at Amgen, a place that I absolutely loved and learned and grew so much from, I had another amazing opportunity come before me. It allowed me to travel all the way across the country to Washington, D.C., where I find myself now at the FDA. So I'm currently in a research fellowship at the FDA, an amazing opportunity. I work in the Division of Pediatric and Maternal Health. Now, it was during this time that I was applying, truly applying to medical schools. I had to fill out my AMCAS application. I also filled out an ACOMAS application. Uh, during that time, I had to fill up, make sure all my activities were set, my personal statement was good to go, and that I was ready to rock and roll when interview season comes. So between my finishing up of my primary application to getting lucky enough to be interviewed, I had to work on my secondaries. I created a massive template on what, what I was going to write and 
how to track all my secondaries coming through. Let me know if you guys want to see that in a future video. So interview season has now passed. It's time for students to kind of figure out where they're going to be and hope that they get some weightless movement. I'm lucky enough that I have an acceptance in hand at my top choice, my top medical school. I'm lucky enough to have my acceptance in hand at my top medical school. So in the fall, I will be attending George Washington School of Medicine, an amazing institution known for all of its opportunities outside of the clinical, known for all of its opportunities outside of clinical medicine, where you have FDA, you have NIH, you have Capitol Hill, and you have, you have the NIH, you have FDA, you have Capitol Hill, and you have private biotech companies all within a 10 mile radius. There's so much to do. There's so many opportunities that are abundant. So that's my unique path from undergrad all the way to starting to medical school this coming fall, and I cannot be more excited. So please be sure to like, subscribe, and share this with all your friends as we embark on the journey of MD in the making.